It's finally here, Arkansas, Kentucky, basketball, Bud Walton Arena, 1 p.m. on CBS. It doesn't get any bigger than that, and we're going to break it all down as we welcome in Bobby Regan of Barstool Sports. You won't want to miss it. This is the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. It's a big one coming up this Saturday. Arkansas is on a really good streak right now playing their best basketball. But so is a team called Kentucky, and they come to Bud Walton Arena. And we're going to talk more about that right now as we go ahead and welcome in Bobby Regan of Barstool Sports, covering all things, whether it's NBA, whether it's college basketball, does a great job with them. And Bobby, appreciate you joining us this afternoon, man. How you doing? No problem. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing well. It's uh, it's hard to argue, especially this time of the year, especially when Kentucky looks good. So I, it's all good over here. So we'll see. We'll see what happens after this weekend, though. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to ask you about with Kentucky, because I like, you know last year, uh, it was so weird seeing Kentucky. I know it was COVID years and, you know, nobody was in the stands. It was strange. Right. But seeing Kentucky, I think when Arkansas beat them in Rupp last year, they had like a 6-18 and 18 record or something stupid like that. And it was so weird seeing. And then, of course, all the hot take machines come out. Oh, man, is Calipari done? Is, is, it, is it finally caught up to him? Whatever. And then this year happens like I knew it would. Kentucky bounces back. They're a top five team. Uh, potentially could be a one seed depending on how – uh, the ending of this goes, but Kentucky, man, I know they got injuries and all that, but they've definitely bounced back in a major way this year compared to last year. Yeah, it's funny how no one wants to give Calipari credit for this year, but everything was his fault last year, which, I mean, it comes with the territory, right? Especially when you're, have the personality of Calipari and the track record he had of, and what like people don't realize, like, yeah, he's still landing top recruiting classes. It's not what he did early in his, uh, his run at Kentucky where it was, you know, the John Walls, the Marcus Cousins, Eric Bledsoe's, and then follows it up with, you know, Brandon. Like, it's not that anymore. It's, it's the mix of transfers, one and dones, two three-year guys. So it's honestly impressive to watch a guy. And Calipari is as stubborn as they get. And it's kind of impressive to watch a guy who's stubborn, successful, and been around forever kind of adapt this late in his career. So, you know, it's a little different than, than watching Musk, who's younger, and you see him even adapting a little bit, right? Like his his story at Nevada was transfer transfer you. He was the king of the transfers, even at Arkansas, starting to transfer. But now he's landing these top, or like, better recruits, and he's mixing in four or five-star guys, transfers, maybe one and dones, but really two-year guys, that kind of threshold. So it's interesting watching, like, kind of the clash of, and we're going to see it happen more often throughout college basketball. Coaches just change. Like, it's happening in the SEC at all times, I feel like. Yeah, you mentioned Muss. Uh, what, what is – from? I know you're a Kentucky fan, obviously. You, you went yeah. and you're a diehard Kentucky fan. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of hatred from at least me and from Razorback fans about Kentucky. But, hey, listen, everybody hates Kentucky because you're yeah, good. Right. Like, yeah, it's like it just happens. But well, as a Kentucky fan – and looking at Arkansas, and you mentioned Muss, which I know Muss, you know, go, has a lot of dealings with Barstool, and he will go on and you know, PMT or whatever it, what it will be. But like, what what have your thoughts have been about him as a coach? Like, is he going to be a, a good enough coach, or can he be a good enough coach to actually win like a national title at Arkansas? Is there limitations? Like, what do you make of him just as a coach? Yeah, I mean, he's a ridiculous coach. He's he's it's, he's had success at Nevada and, and Arkansas for a reason. Um, I mean, can he win a title? Sure. Uh, we've seen Arkansas win a title before. I mean, he made an elite eight, uh, already at Arkansas. Um, but I mean, it's tough. I mean, look at like guys like Matt Painter and it took Tony Bennett how long and Jay Wright, how long? And it's the narrative of can they win changes in one year, right? Like we saw it with, with Jay Wright. No, he'll never win at Nova. Nova will never win another title after 85. You can't win shooting the ball like that. It's one, two. And now it's all of a sudden like Jay Wright's the best coach in America because he won two. It's like, look at Mark Few. Everyone going, Mark Few can't win a title. Well, he's been to two title games in five years, got blown out by, by Baylor, and really was a 
an ankle injury and a bad call away from probably beating Carolina. So it's like, I hate judging things on the NCAA tournament because it's so fluky. But at the same time, I realize that's how everyone's kind of judged. So can he win? Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he ever wins one. It's just a lot tougher at Arkansas, obviously, until he gets it kind of his his thing rolling. He's starting to, but it's – you get college basketball, it's rare that you can do it in one year, right? We, Cal Perry might be, like, the only one that kind of did it, and that was a historic recruiting class with Wall, Bledsoe, Cousins, and that group coming in. But to start setting up, like – your identity as a coach and program, it, it just takes a, a cycle. You, you need two to three years to do it. So he's on the right path. I wouldn't be surprised. Now we'll see what happens going forward. If he's still recruiting the way he is and winning the way he is, then yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, because it's like um, with the formula that Must has, I think it's possible. But then when you brought up like Calipari too, and this is what I try to tell people who have an expectation of winning a national title, which of course, you know, they're, somebody has to win it every year, but it's like, Kentucky, Calipari. I would make an argument. I don't even think it is an argument. Has had the most high-level NBA caliber talent over the past 15 years compared to anybody else and has one title. Now, one is great, so I'm not like like downplaying that, but I'm like, you're talking about a team and a program that has been to multiple Final Fours, that had, was 39-0 and 0 heading into the, you know, the Final Four or whatever it was. Like, they put it all together so many times and still only have won one. And it just shows right. the difficulty of even if you have the insane amount of talent, that doesn't mean anything because you see teams all the time that have more NBA talent or all of that that struggle to win one title, much less multiple titles too. And it just shows there's no way to do it. Izzo, right, regarded as this great coach, one of the historic greats, one title. And how long has Izzo been coaching? Yeah. And he's had NBA talent. He's known for developing guys. He's known for having four-year guys. He's done it every which way. One title. Calipari, one title. Now, even, I mean, Jay Wright, it took two for him to start doing that. But Beheim, one title, right? We've seen him do it a bunch of different ways. He was recruiting a bunch of five stars. He had it. Like, Syracuse had NBA talent. Took Carmelo. Um, it's just weird because the tournament is the flukiest event. It's the worst way to determine who the best team in the country is, it's the best way to determine a champion. Like, that's the that's the easiest way to sum up the tournament because it's matchup dependent, right? Like, you could get screwed if you're a one seed and your bracket holds serve, but a one seed in the bracket below you, you know, it, it ends up being a, a 12 seed you end up playing in the Sweet 16 and, like, a seven seed in the Elite Eight. Like, is it fair? Absolutely not. You have a committee of people trying to organize teams. There's principles. It's just, it's mayhem, and that's why we love it. But the takes from the tournament are always the worst because it's all people want to talk about. And it's like, well, okay, like, if you're going to scream titles, what's – how do you differentiate one title from another? Which I hear all the time, like, well, Tom Izzo has only – like, you know, has one title. And it's like, well, okay, like, if we're talking about him that way, why don't you talk about Calipari the same way or Bayheim or filling all these guys that have one title? I think Nolan Richardson. Is Nolan Richardson as good as Tom Izzo? Like, it, they have the same amount of titles, but if you ask 100 people, bet you 98 say Tom Izzo over Nolan Richardson or Jim Herrick at UCLA, yeah. right? Like, is anybody running around screaming Jim Herrick's a, like an unbelievable all-time coach? It, he is a title. Not many coaches have titles. So it's it's weird in that sense. I mean, Kevin Ollie, there's another. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so it's like, at the same time, like can, it's hard to talk about the tournament like overall, where if you look at like Calipari, most NCAA tournament wins since he took over at Kentucky, handful of Final Fours, another like a runner-up and a title. Would you rather have that run or the Nova run where two titles, every time else they've been there, they've lost, they've made a couple Sweet 16s, but they've gotten upset in the second round. So it's like everyone would probably say Nova, but would you take the two years of that for, let's say, an extra six years of, of competing close? It's it's tough, but it's it's what makes the sport awesome and just dumb at the same time. Yeah, that's the best way to put it, too. We'll talk more with Bobby Regan of Barstool Sports here in just a second. But first, 
folks, I got to tell you about March Madness and the fact that it's really close, like just a few weeks away. And this means you need to start thinking now about where you're going to be running your brackets this year. Are you going to go for the usual or are you going to go for the best? You always want to go for the best. And we've done our homework here on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast and runyourpool.com is where you need to go. Along with standard brackets, Run Your Pool offers game type like Survivor and Pick X, which is both really fun in their own way if you haven't played them. But they have their options to edit scoring. And also they offer more intel to make your picks, all the stuff you won't find at ESPN or at CBS. If you run a business, Run Your Pool can make help make some of that minus magic happen alongside your employees and even, again, for your customers as well. Clearly, we believe here on the podcast about Run Your Pool because, like I said, we're running our brackets there ourselves, and there's no truer test than that. But if you want to play against us for a shot at a cash prize, join us now at runyourpool.com slash locked on. And while you're there, create your own pool for your friends and family. Enter Pure Madness at checkout for $10 off your custom pool. Again, head over to runyourpool.com slash locked on. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're continuing our conversation with Bobby Regan of Barstool Sports. You can follow him on Twitter at Barstool Regs. And uh, let's talk about Arkansas and Kentucky tomorrow, which we know that everyone is highly anticipating here in Arkansas. And I'm sure there's a lot of people excited there in Kentucky. But for you as a Kentucky fan, when I say Razorback basketball, Arkansas basketball, what comes to mind for you as a Kentucky fan? So obviously Bud Walton comes to mind. It's probably the best home court advantage in the SEC. You could argue Auburn, especially with what Pearl's done lately. Um, and then Rupp, and big games, Rupp is unmatched. But for the overall, like top to bottom, it's probably Bud Walton. Um I'm reminded like the 90s, the rivalry was legit. And that and then it fell off because Arkansas fell off and everything else. But it's starting to come back a little bit with over the last, what, seven years maybe? Starting to come back a little bit. I wish it comes back because the SEC thrives on rivalries, whether it's football, basketball, whatever. Kentucky-Arkansas was one of those undervalued rivalries. So it's starting to come back. Um you know, it is weird because I do like Moss and the crew there. So I, I want him to go somewhere else so I can actually, like, get excited for him. Because, again, like, it's weird. So I'm 30 – I turned 35 here soon. It's weird because, like, I don't really hate Arkansas like people probably five to ten years older than me. Where, like, I was just too young during the rivalry period for it to be, like, manifested into me. People older than me – you know, if you say that, they're like, no, 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 we got stuff to say about Arkansas. Now it's more Tennessee, Florida than probably anything else in, in, within the SEC. Um, so it, I hope it comes back because it, it should. Like Arkansas is a rabid fan base. Say, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's you meet them in person, like they want to talk basketball as much as anyone else. Florida's probably had the second most success. Not probably. Florida has had the second most success in the conference. Arkansas is probably third. It's like I hope they, I hope they come back because it's. That, I want the SEC to be a good basketball conference. It's fun. Like it's not fun when Kentucky wins every game by. I mean, it is fun when they win every game by fifteen. But <laughs> it's as a fan of like the sport, it's fun when you talk about these games as top fifteen, top twenty matches. Well, and you know, you brought up like. The, I've always talked about that with the success and obviously like the tiers and, and the SEC. And I agree, like if Arkansas is good and Kentucky's good, the conference is better. Like it just it benefits right. from it so much. And I agree with you as far as the Florida success level, because yeah, for sure, like Florida back to back national. But I guess what I've always looked at it when it comes to programs, and I feel this way about Kentucky too, and about multiple programs elsewhere, is you know when a program is historic, when it's not about the success of what a coach did at the program, but what the program has done with good coaches. Right. What I mean by that is like Florida. The only thing Florida had, like what made Florida great was Billy Donovan. Like it, it wasn't necessarily just their great hires or historic coaches or anything. Billy Donovan was just a phenomenal coach and it worked yeah. out for him. And, you know, Kentucky, they've had Hall of Fame coaches, you know, going back to Rupp, obviously Patino. 
uh, you know, Tubby Smith won a title there, and obviously Cal Tony Hall now. won a title. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's multiple coaches, and in Arkansas, it's like you had Eddie Sutton, which we know yeah. of course went to Kentucky too. You had Nolan Richardson, and everyone's hoping that Musk can kind of be. Maybe not saying he's a Hall of Famer right now, but hoping that he can have the high level success. So that's where it's always been like. I guess the, the closest thing I can think for Arkansas being a, a program where they're not defined by a coach. They're defined by, you know, previous successes that they've had to go along. Yeah, with it's, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting thing to watch because I agree. Like, it's why I say. Like Syracuse or like Calhoun's a good example. I think Calhoun's one of the four best coaches in college basketball history for, sure. for what yeah. he did at UConn. Like, no one wants to go to Stores, Connecticut. And he <laughs> turned that into legit one of the best programs in the country it's why i look at like syracuse when Bayheim leaves what are they going to become we've never seen syracuse go through a coaching search we we don't know life without Bayheim in syracuse michigan state you at least had like judd heathcote had success then Izzo. so yeah i agree when you kind of look at like the tier one tier two programs in the country what have they done with multiple coaches um Carolina is a good example. They won, obviously, with yeah. with Roy and Dean Smith. Um, now, you could say whatever about the coaches. They won with two two Hall of Fame coaches. Um, Duke's just a little different because Krzyzewski has just been on his own. Same, similar to UCLA, where, yeah, they're defined by Wooden. But, hey, like Herrick won a title. Cronin brought him to a Final Four. Ben Howland brought him to a Final Four. They've had success. Um so, yeah, I think Arkansas, if Musk can get to a Final Four, maybe the national perception of them changes a little bit of, well, hey, okay, they had success with Sutton, they had success with Nolan, now they had success with Musk. We're not saying they're a top five pro, you know, a blue yeah. blood or anything, but they're in that next group of mm-hmm. what, you know, is there really a difference between Arkansas and, I don't know, what would be another good example of, of hey, like they're they've had enough success to win. maybe Arizona, right? Like maybe they're they're, go, yeah. they're Arizona, where they've had enough success. They have a title. They have a title that people our age were alive for, so that you, you do remember it. Um, and if they can get to a Final Four when when we're a little bit older, like that helps too, because it was th- almost thirty years ago. So it, they, they they need to get into another Final Four at some point here soon. Yeah, and I think that that's like also what kills Razorback fans is like seeing like South Carolina go to that Final Four. And they're like, are yeah. you kidding me? Like, and then Auburn going to it, which I know Pearl's got it going at Auburn, which I know we'll talk about here in a second. But, uh, but you know, like a Baylor who won it last year, like, right? I don't like they won a title, but I don't consider them a blue blood. Like, you know, it's it's going to take more. They're a great program, but I mean, it's just the recency bias and all those things too. Yeah, I mean, Scott Drew is a ridiculous coach. Yeah, like he's so like, good. And, and, you know, you talked about people being like, well, he's been a Baylor for, what, 20 years? 20 and years. Now it just shows sometimes, you know, we get so apt to, like, you know, change coaches and fire coaches. It's like, you know, hey, if he, sometimes it does work out if you give coaches time. Not saying if, you know, if you have John Pelfrey as your coach to keep him on board <laughs> right. if he's going losing seasons. But, um, you know, that's, the I think, the unique thing about college basketball. And I don't know if it's going to go away or stay around. But in college football, if you're not – unless you're Nick Saban, you're a program that's changing coaches pretty frequently. Uh, well, there are five. There are five teams in college football that can win a title. College yeah. basketball is a lot deeper. Like there are five programs that ever win a title in college football. Yeah, yeah. And but it's like you know, like you mentioned Coach K and how long he's been at, at Duke. You know, Calipari. I'll admit, Calipari has been at Kentucky longer than I thought he would. I honestly yeah. thought that he'd be there. But if the right NBA job opened up, like with the right team, I thought he would leave. But he's been there a long time. I think, uh, but it's like between him and Jay Wright, and you know, you mentioned Drew, like in basketball and Schizo, like the list goes on and on and on. If in basketball, it just seems like I don't know if it's more patience or what, but they let coaches stay and do their thing, and they're not so easy to fire coaches, especially if you like have tastes of success. Like if you give those little little bit of taste, you you continue to keep your job. It's not about winning a title or busting type deal. Well, that's. That's the unique thing about the tournament, right? You can save yourself if you get a couple high seeds. Maybe you don't make a Final Four, but hey, like we were a two seed three years in a row and made uh, two Elite Eights and a Sweet 16. Yeah. Or on the flip side, if you're, let's say, a five seed, you're, you kind of have a whatever season, you know, in and out of the bottom half of the top 25, but you
but you get hot and make a run to the Final Four. We've seen coaches flip that, too, where it's like, oh, he got us to a Final Four. You're good for the next, like, three, four years. Yeah. Right? So it's that's the one weird thing. Not weird. The nice or bad thing about the NCAA tournament is you can flip what a fan base thinks of you. Look at Rick Barnes, right, at Tennessee. I think he's a good example where – the last five years, I think he's been like a three seed, three times, a two seed, and a five seed. He hasn't made a Final Four, but Tennessee's consistently one of one of the top twenty teams in the country. That matters because it's a it's different than football, where you focus on one loss and it's like, well, he lost, and now we're playing in the Independence Bowl. It's like, well, yeah. there because four teams make a playoff. Like it's kind of tough to do here. And if, you, and if you are, especially in the SEC, if you aren't in the playoff, it's a failure of a season, it seems like, right? Like, it's just yeah. the nature of college football, where college basketball, you can – success is different on every level, too, where it's like, you know, a couple – like, Florida, like, Donovan made a couple lead eights, and it's like or, – or Arizona, Sean Miller made three lead eights in a row, happened to lose to Wisconsin twice, like, lost these close games, and then he – was deemed like the next guy likely to win a title, had a couple down years, and everyone deemed him a failure. And it's like, well, if he made two, like Derek Williams goes to the rim against UConn instead of settling for a three, he's in the final four, and we're talking about Sean Miller, completely different. So it is it is weird in that sense of how you can twist a job based on that, but it's it's college basketball. And that's why I think guys do get a longer leash because, like, you, like we talked about, how many times do you see a run – from like a five or six seed to at least a sweet 16 elite eight. And, oh, next year, this is what you build on. And it's like, or you just got hot for three games. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. And I think that uh, with, with the tournament and teams that make runs, um, you know, it, it's kind of like it, maybe it gives you hope always where even if it's like you're a four seed or five seed, it's like, oh, we just get hot. You know, we can make it to the final four right. where you're so handcuffed. Like you said, in, in college football, where it's like, one loss, you're out. Like pretty much, like it's done in the regular season. Changes that you could be the seventh best team in the country and not have a chance to win a title. Like that's insane. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. it's like no other. You could be the third best team in your conference and you don't have a chance. Meanwhile, like the third best team in the Big Twelve is going to be a two seed. Yeah, well, and it's like you know we think about like look at Arkansas for instance in, in the '90s when they in, when they were so good. People forget Arkansas never only has won one SEC tournament and it was in 2000. Yeah. Like and it was with the uh, like an Arkansas needed that tournament to get into the tur- uh, to NCAA tournament and they had Joe Johnson on the team like that, <laughs> that the o- yeah like that was the only time even though they had those so it's it just shows you how difficult it is and even though you may be the best team in your conference you may not even win your conference tournament no. because of how it's set up so yeah that's that's the that's the crazy thing about it and when we're looking at Arkansas too and what they've uh, done this year I think that's what people are kind of hoping for for them to make another run in the tournament. Because you know everyone talks about what it takes to get into the tournament and what it takes to to go far in the tournament, and I think the number one thing that Arkansas has going for them is defense. Because like JD Note is really good; he's a really good offensive player. Jalen Williams is coming around; he's a double double machine, and they'll have some other guys step up here and there. But it's like their defense has been so good where they've held almost every SEC opponent that they've played to under forty percent shooting and an under sixty points for the most part. There's been a few here and there. So it's like, I mean, is that what it is that like one of the biggest factors that helps you go far in the term? Is it defense? Is it guard play? I mean, what what is the formula for a team to go far in the NCAA tournament, even though it is a crapshoot at times? It's for sure guard play. I mean, look at look at championship winners. Look, look at the guards that champions have had. Like, I think it's weird. Uh, you, you might be able to make a case that the last team that won a title without a guard being its best player is 2012 Kentucky with Anthony Davis, right? Like 2013, Peyton Siva, 2014 was Shabazz, 2015. 2015, you can make a case, I guess, with Okafor. And, uh, but I mean, they had Jones, 2016, Archie Diakonel, Josh Hart. Like the list, you can keep going. 2017 with Joel Barrett. Like every time you go down this list, it's guard play. Even last year, Baylor had three guards. So for me, it's always guard play, and it's do you have pros? Having pros matters. The last time we thought, the last time we thought this like scrappy team won a title was 26, 
Villanova, they have seven pros on their roster. And when I say pros, I'm talking how to run in the NBA pro. Not, and I don't want to take away from going to play overseas or G League, right. but top level pros. Um, so like that matters. Like you need to have, and is it a chicken and egg type thing? Yes, to a small degree where a run in the tournament helps boost your sock. But if you're a pro, you're a pro. Like, you know, people tend to know that pretty early on. So guard play and, and having pros matters. Like defense matters for sure. But if you don't have guard play, like, because again, like I'd say tournament in college basketball as a whole, if you can't score on offense, if you can't initiate offense and it gets into a half court game where the air is taken out of the ball. And if you're so reliant on turnovers and points, um, you're kind of dead man walking. Like you can't just throw the ball to a big and hope to, he makes a move in the post. Like it's just not the way the game's played anymore. You need to have a guard that can, you can play through a big, don't get me wrong, but you need to have a guard that can break the defense down, get that big and easier look and the floor spread. So it's not three guys in the paint at one time. So, yeah, I think guard play and pros are, the, the, to me at least, the two most important things. We'll get into our final segment of the Locked On Razor Rex podcast with Bobby Regan of Barstool Sports here in just a second. But first, got to tell you about Built Bar. We know that we're all struggling to try to keep it up when it comes to our New Year's resolutions. Nothing else like that. But here's the thing. Luckily, Built Bar is going to help you out with that and continue to help it out because maybe one of the biggest weaknesses you have is the snacks that you have around and all the all the goodies that you keep stashed. Well, if you can do this challenge, it will make everything so much better. Where if you buy Built Bar and you replace Built Bars with all the sweets that you have, whether it's at the office or at home or wherever, it's going to make your life a lot easier because they taste great, covered in 100% chocolate, but they're really healthy with different flavors that they have. And especially the fact that it's got 17 grams of protein and only 130 calories in most bars. You won't get anything better than that when it comes to your protein bars. And we're offering you a great deal right now where if you go over to built.com and use promo code LOCKED15, you get 15% off your next order. It doesn't matter how many you order. It doesn't matter if you order at the whole store. Whatever flavor you want, whatever product you want, LOCKED15 at built.com gives you 15% off. Again, go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15. For 15% off at built.com. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, final segment with Bobby Regan of Barstool Sports, talking a little college basketball, Arkansas and Kentucky, of course, happening uh tomorrow something i wanted to bring up to you is um of course you know we talk about arkansas kind of coming back and kentucky and the rivalry that it is and and everything there too um in bud walton arena like i don't know if you've ever been to bud walton or experienced Bud. no walton, it's on the bucket list yeah like and i was actually thinking about it uh just a couple weeks ago assuming that it came to this i was like man i want to text bobby and see if he like has any chance of coming down because i think that'd be um uh so fun but you know, I, I feel like I almost take it for granted where I grew up as a Razorback fan. I grew up in Fayetteville and I went, I've been to Bud Walton since it opened back in the championship year all the time. And it fits 20,000 people there. And I know Rupp has over 20,000 people. I, I don't know exactly the number that it fits, but it like, I guess that that's where I like to kind of like laugh at Auburn fans right now, which I know that they have gotten out of control. Like they, they're insane right now of what they're doing, but it's like, <laughs> I, I, it's like, you know, they got like 10,000 people there. There's a lot of other SEC arenas that maybe get 13,000. But it's impressive to me in college, especially modern day college basketball, if you can get 20,000 people in an arena for a college basketball game, especially multiple times. And that's where I think like Arkansas and Kentucky kind of stand alone in their own right. <laughs> that even not even just for big games, but for a lot of games, you can get 20,000 plus people in these arenas. And it just shows you kind of the fan base and how passionate they are about basketball, too. Yeah, well, there's nothing else – like, there's nothing else to compete with, right? Like, speaking for Lexington, you're an hour from Cincinnati. You're an hour and a half, two hours from Indianapolis. You're three hours or so from Nashville. So, in terms of pro teams, pro markets, you're kind of on its own. Same with Fayetteville. Like, you're not yeah. you're not competing with a pro team where – um. You know, Indiana fan. Hey, the Hoosiers play on Tuesday. The Pacers play on Tuesday. 
uh, I don't know, it's easier to get a ticket to the Pacers, let's just go there, right? Where it's, or, oh, hey, like the LeBron's in town, we'll just go see the, the Pacers, Lakers instead of Indiana, Maryland. So the market is just easier for Arkansas and Kentucky. Um, and then just specific to the SEC, we talked about it right before we started recording. Arkansas is unique where, like, they aren't bad at, like, I, I want to say this so Arkansas fans don't yell at me. <laughs> Guys do have a football history, but you don't have a football history of the majority of the other SEC schools, especially yeah. SEC West. That's fair. So it's easier to say, hey, we're, we're a, like, basketball school, <laughs> right? Like, Kentucky's embraced it. Auburn's starting to embrace it where – Football has been down for them for a few years, a couple years. Basketball has been up. No, no, we're basketball school now. <laughs> Let's just focus all our energy here. You know, they'll still sell out everything for, for football. But it is easier when you don't have, like, the Alabama success or even, you know, Florida's unique because they've had basketball success, you know, within recent times as well as, Florida, as football. But um, LSU, right, like you're not – you're not LSU where, hey, we've had recent football titles multiple times that everyone remembers. Um, so it's it's easier to get fired up for uh, basketball, especially like if you're a student where, yeah. hey, there are, what, seven, eight Saturdays in football season. It's easy to go to a game. But basketball, it's like, okay, we're we really going to go to a Tuesday 9 p.m. tip well, against Vanderbilt. And that's yeah. where I think it's unique of – well, yeah, of course we're going to go. Like, why wouldn't we? What else are we going to do? Yeah. So it's it, it is unique, and again, like I want the SEC to all be there. Like it, it, I joke around and get yelled at about like, yeah, like every game against Kentucky is Arkansas is doing a stripe out. It's a t-shirt game. It's a it's a fill in the color out. Well, yeah, that's great and all, but it'd be nice if, and we're starting to see it this year with like Auburn coming to town. It'd be nice if like when. Teams come to town, it's that way just regardless. And, yeah, sure, like Kentucky will still always get the whatever out. But, you know, when it's Texas A&M against, I don't know, Alabama in basketball, like, can we get more than 30% filled capacity? Yeah. Yeah. And, like, I've that's the thing that I've seen, especially with, like, A&M. You know, you mentioned them. I saw, I guess it was a, maybe their game against Georgia or something like that recently where – I mean, it looked, and this is not an insult. It just looked like, you know, a midweek, like, women's game here in Arkansas, like, where it's right. just, the, the crowd is just, is, is just not there. And, um, yeah, and so it's just like, it's just different between each school. And you bring up Auburn, too. And I know that we, you, you we've had this discussion, or at least we've tweeted about it. Um, I like the fact that Auburn has become uh, another good team because you know again we like parity we like going up and having bigger games and just circling Kentucky and then the rest of them are just kind of meh like it's good to have that but man I <laughs> like when Arkansas played Auburn uh and Arkansas beat Auburn and stormed the court and it was awesome the amount of Auburn fans that at least were coming at me and tweeting at me about like oh y'all treated this like it was it was your Super Bowl you know we finally have made it and all those things and I'm like you guys know it was because of the number next to your name, right? It, like, it wasn't because we beat Auburn basketball. It's because we beat the number one team in the country. Right. And and I think that that's where some of these new programs, like an Auburn basketball program, who's, who's I think they've been to t total 10 NCAA tournaments. Like, almost, like, Arkansas has almost been to as many Final Fours as, like, that. So, it's like, I get it. You guys are good. Great. That's awesome. But it's like – you're you're coming around to where you're thinking you've already arrived. You know, you're already the Kentucky. And I was like, no, Kentucky is different. Even when Kentucky is having a bad year, it's still <laughs> Kentucky. Like, you still want to beat them. You still hate Big Blue Nation. Like, you want to beat them. But with Auburn, it's like, it, it wouldn't have mattered. It, like, it could have been number one team in the country, Vanderbilt Commodores, and it right. still would have been the same reaction. So it's like, I, I like the fact that they're getting more teams that are being more competitive, and especially at a higher level. But – I'm also wanting to look, make sure people understand that it's like, it's still, there's a difference between beating Auburn and being Kentucky still, no matter what. Yeah, like, listen, it, Auburn can't say that when they beat Kentucky this year in Auburn and players were like stripping shirts and shorts off on the floor and going crazy. Like you want to talk about Super Bowls guys. Like, listen, I'm glad you're good. Like we're the Super Bowl for you're the number one team in the country. We're the Super Bowl. Like, that's yep. all that matters. Like, that's – until you have continued success, which Pearl very well might, 
you're not. Like, you're just not. You're Auburn basketball. You're a good story. You're becoming a good program. But you're right. Like, it could be one seed southwest Missouri or southeast Missouri State. If they come, like, guess what? Everyone sees, oh, number one's here. Let's go pack the place, camp out. Like, that's what it is. And you're right. Like, we talked about it before, the Kentucky-Arkansas series. Like, Arkansas beats Kentucky when they're an eight seed. And it's, like, that's what Arkansas is like, yeah, well, okay, we got Kentucky. That's check one of the goals of the season off the list. It's it's not that way with Auburn yet. And it might get there, but I would venture to guess not because it's really hard to become a blue blood. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just – and our, like you make a look at Arkansas, you know, they looked like they probably felt like in the 90s that they were a blue blooded program. But man, it, right. the, wrong, the wrong coaching hire, you know, after something goes down. Look at changes. Memphis. Yes. Or Indiana. Memphis. Indiana might be the best example, right? 100%. As yeah. blue blood as blue blood gets. They've, been, they've had one relevant season since like 2000. Yeah, 2002, the, I guess they made the title game in 02. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, they've had one one true relevant season when they were the one seed and lost to Syracuse. Yeah, was that the Oladipo in the year? Yeah. I guess when he was there. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was the year they beat Kentucky on that buzzer buzzer beater. No, too. Kentucky oh, beat what? Indiana the year Wofford hit the buzzer beater against Kentucky was the eleven twelve year. Kentucky beat Indiana in the Sweet Sixteen when they won the title. Oh, okay. Well, I was thinking of the regular season game. Was that not the same? That was the same year. And okay. Kentucky had two losses that year. It was the buzzer beater to Indiana and then the SEC title game to Vanderbilt. Yeah, which makes no sense. But yeah, That was the year game. Vandy was a four seed, though. That was the uh, – Oh, my God. Yeah, that's right. That was Kevin... the Foster, John Jenkins team. Oh, and Kevin Stallings. Wasn't he the coach? Yeah, or... That's another one. Like, with, like Vanderbilt, they weren't as to the level of Auburn, right? But Stallings yeah. had them – Decent, relevant for a few years. Yeah. Now yeah. it's like, you know, Vandy's two wins on the year. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, a, that's another one too. So, but yeah, that's my thing is like, um, you know, Arkansas fans, since they've tasted the major, especially the older ones, like they've tasted success and they know, like, but like, you know, we talked about court storming this week, which I know uh, the court stormers of Barstool is yep. going to be at this game. Yeah. Which really that, uh, like, in a predicament with that. Yeah. Like, cause I'm like, Going into it, I'm like, okay, you you can't rush the court twice in a year. You can't rush can't. the court twice in three weeks. Like, you just, eh, I don't, I don't like that. But then, I think that most people were on board with not rushing the court. But then when they announced that they were coming, I think suddenly the students are like, oh, now we have to rush the court if these guys are here too. And I want to say, I don't care if teams rush the court. Like to me, there are there are three tiers of rushing the court. Teams that absolutely cannot: Kentucky, Duke, Carolina, Kansas. Facts, Those yeah. four are not allowed to rush the court whatsoever. We will make fun fair. of you if you rush the court. If you are Arizona, Gonzaga, UCLA, Villanova, UConn, Michigan State, everyone else just rush the court whenever you want because it's a bunch of dumb college kids and who cares? Like we're mm -hmm. all dumb in college. Yeah. I, when I was at Kentucky, we rushed the field like four times for football. It's awesome. <laughs> Even though I snapped my phone because it was flip phone era multiple times. Like, Still had a blast rushing the field when we beat like number one LSU or or top ten Louisville, but or like Stafford Georgia. But it's it's all like it's fun, like it's college kids. Who cares? But Arkansas is like they could reach the category, and it would take some years, but they could reach the category of like, hey, we're gonna still make fun of you if you rush the court, but go ahead and do it. Yeah, they're kind of flirting with it. I feel like at this point, like to to get that uh, to get that made fun of because it's funny. They I just make it their thing. Just make it Arkansas thing of rushing the court no matter what. Kind of like Clemson does in football, you know? Like right. Always like what, the SEC is just going to find them every time. I don't, like yeah. dare them to find them. Oh gosh, yeah. I don't. I don't know if they ever want that. But I was like, um, when, uh, like when I was a student when Qualls had to put back dunk against Kentucky. Okay. And I was the front row of the student section. Of course, it was it was bedlam. But I remember we were going to rush the court, but the only reason we didn't is because for some unreal reason the refs put 0. 0.2 seconds on the yeah. clock. I don't remember back then. I'm like, you can't do anything with 0.2 no. seconds. The, so, the only thing you can do is a full court pass tip. Yeah. And like, like which, you literally have to volleyball tip it. That's it. Yeah. Which, it, it was so unlikely. But, anyways, like that was the only time I remember us getting close to it. And, um, like, and I don't think I rushed the field as a student either. Like, I didn't have any of that. So I, I'm with you. Like, I get it. It's fun. And like in Arkansas, like when we did it for Texas football, it was awesome. And, you know, the Auburn one was really awesome too. But, 
I don't know. It's you just you don't want to do it too many times, I guess. You don't because it's just especially so back to back right. close together. Because Arkansas is a, what number eighteen in the country, I think. And well, that's the thing. Know. Arkansas is playing well now. Yeah. Like if they if they kind of sputtered after beating Auburn and we're like, all right, we're bubble team, then yeah, it's like okay, we're likely in the tournament now. We'll we'll rush for that reason and beating Kentucky. Yeah, but yeah, it's like. Actually, we're just one of the hottest teams in the country, so we're just going to do it regardless. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm. Again, I'm not going to be mad if they do it, but at the same time, it's kind of like it's not going to feel the same way as if they did it when they did it against Auburn, because also Arkansas went through a time where they didn't rush the court. Like I think since like '99, Auburn, something like that. Okay. When, when Auburn was number two, which is funny, it was Auburn. Yeah, the, the Chris but, Porter Auburn team. Yeah, yeah, and it was like Arkansas had a had a Pat Bradley and a, a Brandon Dean and Derek Hood and all those guys. So. Um, but, uh, Hey, uh, before though, we get out of here, man, just, I, I, I know how I feel about the game tomorrow. I want to know how you feel. Do you think Kentucky can go into Bud Walton in front of 20,000 people and beat Arkansas? Or do you think Arkansas gets Kentucky because of some of the injuries that they have right now? Yeah. So it's crazy for me to say that Kentucky can't do it because this team we're seeing without Ty Ty and Severe still finding ways to win against good teams, Alabama, LSU, we're talking tournament teams. They're finding ways to win those games without two lead guards, which is almost unheard of, especially at this level. Yeah, especially against those teams, too. And Arkansas kind of falls in that category of you need good guards to beat these teams because of the way they defend, trap, press, play, and style play. You know, you're not going to beat them playing a bunch of, like, you know, Keon Brooks and Jacob Toppin and Oscar all out there together. Um, now, I do think Arkansas catches Kentucky because I don't think Ty Ty plays. Just reading tea leaves and – Kind of what I would do, too, if I was Cal, is you are playing with a little bit of house money against Arkansas because those two wins this past week happened and were so important to where Kentucky loses to Arkansas, they barely get punished, right? Like, if yeah. they're the number five overall seed right now, five overall team right now, they fall to six probably in the in the bracket. And that's at most. And that's in a vacuum. We don't know what else happens in the country, obviously. If they win, then you're talking – you're really debating Kentucky as a one seed. Um, So you are playing with house money, but if Ty Ty sits, and I think he does sit, it just eliminates, Ty Ty is the playmaker for Kentucky. He's so unique in the sense of, he's probably the best pick and roll player Kentucky has had since Tyler Eulis or maybe Shea Gilgis Alexander. So you need to have that in order, you know, you can bring Arkansas's defense away and it sets Grady up as a shooter. You can have Mintz as a shooter. Washington's a shooter. You know, it, it, it just sets up the offense completely different. And then you have to do have to worry about a little bit of a letdown factor for Kentucky. Whether or not Severe plays, like I said, I don't think Ty Ty plays. Whether or not Severe plays, you're still talking about two comeback wins against two tournament teams where, you know, Kellen Grady, Mintz, Oscar all played serious minutes. I do think they have the stamina to like last because they're college kids. They're Kellen Grady's used to playing this many minutes at Davidson. It's not like uncommon, but at some point, like you just hit a wall, it, especially in college basketball. Like we've seen teams just hit walls every single year, every single time. It's like you just take a loss. So I, that's kind of where I think Arkansas catches them. Um, but do I think Kentucky can go and win? Absolutely. And again, we'd like Ty Ty and Severe could play, mm. and. Kentucky could shoot, you know, 10 of 14 from three or something. It's, yeah. it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be outrageous for Kentucky to win that game, but it does feel like this is the one that Kentucky kind of drops. And it's like, okay, when the last two regular season games move on to March. Yeah. Cause I guess last year when Arkansas beat Kentucky, they th- I think Kentucky went like 15 of 27 from three and like still Arkansas was able to get a one point yeah. win. Like it was something stupid. So I, but I, I totally agree. I think that being a Bud Walton for sure helps. Like if this game was in Rupp, I wouldn't feel good about it at all. Right. Um, right. But, and I also think that, and I, I'm honest about this. I am more concerned even with Kentucky and even with their injuries to tie Ty, Ty and severe and all that, like, I am more concerned about them than I was against Auburn and I was against Tennessee or anything like that because it's just something. And it's like, I mean, you can say it's the Kentucky factor, but it's like, I think the crowd and atmosphere got to Auburn. Like, I think that's yeah, why Kentucky's they were used to that. Exactly. Kentucky, it doesn't phase them. Like, when Cal Parry got ejected a couple of years ago, that was the loudest moment in Bud Walton Arena history. Didn't matter. Didn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Like, they, so I, I don't think it'll, the atmosphere will get to them as much, but, uh, 
I look at it too as like if Arkansas is going to beat Kentucky though, like you, you you're catching them for all the reasons you said at the right time with the injuries, with coming off the highs, with it being a Bud Walton. I'm like, if you don't beat them here, man, like <laughs> it, it, it's going to be tough. But Kentucky is perfectly good enough and capable to to go into yeah. the green and win. So and it's weird, like I don't mind a loss. Like yeah. I, I shouldn't say it that way. Like a loss. I'm not going to react to a loss against Arkansas in this scenario like I would different years because of all the reasons we listed. And it's like, yeah, just win the last two games and Kentucky feels like they lock into a two seed. Yeah. Like, that's all that matters is get healthy for March. And yeah. it's, it's weird saying that because you're used to saying, no, you got to win every game. You got to win every game. And it's like, no, no, no. I just want Ty Ty and Spear to be healthy. I want everyone to be healthy. Like if Kentucky gets down big or anything like that, pull everybody. Like I'm just – just pull everybody out. Save the ankles. That's all I care about. Like, I yeah. don't want a freak injury when you're down like 18 with six minutes to go. So it's, yeah. it is weird being in that stretch where, and it's tough for Kentucky fans and, and fans in general to kind of do it, like compartmentalize. You want to win the game, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. So it's, yeah. that's where I am with the team or with them in this game. Um, and it matters more for Arkansas. It just does. Like, you're at home. It's the one time they play. And an Arkansas win, you're really talking about them as a top four seed in the tournament. Yeah. And I think that that's why Razorback fans want it. As my, as bad as anything. But, you know, you always want to win at home. And it is Kentucky and all those things. But, um, I don't know. It, it it won't surprise – nothing will surprise me in this game, I guess. No. And that's kind of how I got with Kentucky, too. Because I thought that, like, I thought Alabama or LSU was going to catch them. Just because of the style of play and not having guards. And then Kellen Grady goes nuts against Alabama. Bryce Hopkins saves the day against LSU. So it's like, I don't know. For all I know, Damian Collins could come in and put up like 12 and 10 against Arkansas. Or or Jacob Toppin hits like 30. Like, and yeah. This team, and I don't want to say it's weird things happening because I do think Kentucky is on the very short list of national title contenders. If not, one, mm -hmm. like, they are one of the best teams in the country, especially at full strength. But, like, they're just finding ways, and it's different guys, and that's where Calipari is just kind of being like, okay, we're going to throw this guy in. Dante Allen, it's your turn. Let's see what you do. And and Davion Mitz, it's your turn. So, yeah, I, I'm with you where I, I wouldn't be surprised, but just it feels like this is the game Arkansas catches them. First top 25 matchup between these two teams and Bud Walton since, I think it's 1997. I think. Yeah, that's weird. Like it, so yeah, so I mean, this is this is a historic game in, in that respect too. So it's just good to it's good where both programs can look at this game and say, right. you know what, it's not going to hurt us if we lose because they're a good team, but it'd be great to win. It's like bonus, like it's just nice to be able to have that once again where you can view. Yeah, it not way. playing like a fourteen and fifteen Arkansas team where you're like, I don't want to go to Bud Wall and play <laughs> this team and like everyone overreact if they lose without guards. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, if a Qualls put back dunk happens, all of a sudden it's just like, how? How in the world right, did you have yeah, right. that happen? So, but uh, hey, Bobby, man, appreciate you joining us, dude. It was awesome catching up with you. I know tomorrow's going to be a lot of fun, even though I hate Kentucky. You're a good guy. <laughs> so uh, you can follow him at, uh, at, on Twitter at Barstool Riggs. And we appreciate it, man. And I know we'll be catching up soon. No problem, man. Have a good one.